not as good as my own personal setup. But then, to be fair, the way I set my desktop up is something I've been used to for years and years. So, of, of course, I'm going to be more productive with that. Um, but she did like Unity, uh, which makes me wonder when you read a lot of the press what the future is going to be. Is Ubuntu going to win back if it has indeed lost any of its supporters with the Unity? Uh, I think the press is quite okay with Unity. I'm looking, I'm trying to tell apart the, uh, the geek press or the blogs and people. Uh, actually, one of the uh, very funny quotes I heard was something like, everybody hated Unity, and then they actually tried it. Mm, you know, even yeah. before they tried. So, uh, when I, I looked at the press, and I posted a few reviews today to, uh, to the, uh, advocacy news group, for example, and it, it, it pretty much surprises me, because I'm expecting them to really hate Unity, but it turns out that once you put a journalist there to assess this for a period of time, and they do actually put more time into assessing it, they don't just try it for one hour. They just kind of blurt out a uh, quick comment and blog post or something. They actually mm-hmm. put some time into it. And usually they say it's quite okay. Uh, and I, I'm going to try it later this month. I'm going to spend about a week in the lab. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm going to use a different computer as well. So I just decided I probably will try and put Unity up there and see what it's like. Uh, KDE had the, has a similar uh, thing going on. I'm not sure if you ever tried uh, Plasma Desktop. Plasma Dash desktop. So in KDE you have two modes. You have the normal mode, which is also somewhat simplified compared to KDE 3. Uh, and then you have the very kind of mobile phone-ish, as you call it, uh, interface, which still supports like 3D and zooming in and uh, multiple desktops to a certain degree. So so this is a bit more like Unity uh, or a bit more like... Um, I, I haven't tried GNOME 3, so I don't really know what it looks like and how it behaves, but... But they do try and make sure that KD, and I would call it KDSC, which means software, uh, software, what's it called, software, compilation. Uh, so they they distinguish between the desktop environment and the whole project. So there is like the software compilation that's just a bunch of programs and uh, different experiences all kind of going under the same umbrella, which is the, which is the uh, uh, KDEV, which is based, I think, in Germany. Uh, so, yeah, so, so there is this attempt to diversify a bit. Microsoft is completely confused when it comes to operating system because they have this thing now. Basically, Windows Mobile is dead. It's over. It's unmaintained. It's just not up to scratch. It doesn't have browsers. It, forget about it. But then they have this thing called, uh, and I think basically it used to be base 19, and then they have the Windows Phone 7, which doesn't even reuse many of the components they currently use. Except for the crappy ones that which were on the deathbed before and now completely dead, and that's like Silverlight and things like that. So forget about the phone; it's it's dead. They're just trying these patents now, as far as I can tell. And I saw a report which I wrote about two hours ago, and that's Microsoft having just one percent market share in terms of the sales of Windows Phone 7. So if a few years go past, the only phone that Microsoft is going to sell an operating system is going to be Windows Phone 7. So the market share of Windows in the uh, in the mobile phone market is going to converge somewhere around one percent, unless they improve somehow, uh, which is really you know one percent. If they get one percent, they can just call off the whole project because the number of developers they have to have assigned to it is just mm-hmm. too great to. But that, that as long as they have that, they don't, don't get to be called a patent troll because they actually do have a product competing against Android and, and such operating system. So now the uh, the thing I was going to say though is uh, that's that's to do with the phone. Uh, they have this thing called Windows 8, which is Windows 7 with ARM support and like a few more gimmicks and stuff. To be to say politely, I haven't seen anything special about it. Um, I haven't seen much. I haven't seen much on it at all. Particularly, you know, I mean, it's not going to work, and I, I don't. I haven't heard them even trying to. Uh, visualize it as working on the Nokia phone. So the Nokia phones are, even though they some of them use ARM processors, they don't, they don't really use Atom and, and stuff. Uh, I haven't heard them say anything about Windows being used on these. Uh, they only say things about the Phone 7 uh, platform. So, which is which is basically crap. It's just it's it's just not compa- It doesn't have enough to compete. It's just it's not there. It's like BlackBerry, it's just going to be eaten away, uh, uh, except BlackBerry actually has some reputation, so um, so they probably will do do kind of okay for a while. But um, Well, Roy, you, you very, very uh, cleverly managed to completely derail 
the article I was going to bring up when we're talking about Fedora. So if I may, I'll just throw in very quickly, and this will be in the show notes as well. Um, it's from the blog uh, Kernel Reloaded, and uh, it's a very nice little article, just a short thing, on Fedora in public libraries. And uh, it, it makes a nice story, a bit nice reading, and uh, I suggest I will leave it at that because we don't really need to, to go into detail. Um, you can have a read of it, have a link in the show notes, um, and I think uh, I think you'll like it. It's a nice little, nice little story to end the Fedora part. Uh, so, sorry, Roy, I'll go back to you, and hopefully we have another topic uh, to bring up. I'm still trying to figure out the market share of Fedora. I, I keep hearing about different versions of Fedora and the counts for different versions because, as you know, the release cycle there is very fast and uh, very often Fedora has been used for deployments of uh, systems that are of a uh, scientific nature. So things like the uh, NASA deployments for explorations and simulations and things like that. Uh, so Fedora is uh, apparently being used by or installed or reported from over 20, like 22, 22 million computers or IP addresses. I don't really know how many people use it. I know in the Department of Computer Science here, uh, in Manchester University, they have Fedora 11. So that's about two, three years, two years plus uh, back in time with KD 4. Point, like 4.2 maybe, 4.3. Uh, so I'm just just giving people some food for thought. I mean, even if people don't write about Fedora 15, uh, the, the, the distribution is maintained well enough. So lots of people use older version of that in labs and places like that. And then I think Fedora might actually be challenging in terms of market share the Ubuntu base. Uh, I saw some articles about Ubuntu in Germany, very major numbers, like 10,000 here, 10,000 there, and it's it's really quite encouraging. I, I don't think the trolls very much like it when we mention those uh, those things. Well, I, I mean, I think we discussed this last episode when Rusty was here, and that was uh, about the distro watch rankings. And I'm just looking down for the last six months, um, the page hits, and I'll make this very clear: this isn't how many downloads, even. This is um, the statistics on distro watch, where how many times people have clicked on the page corresponding to a specific distro. So, uh, according to this, I'll just do the top five because I don't want to. to send anybody to sleep, especially when they can see this themselves. But in the last six months, uh, the total hits have made Ubuntu at number one, and that's standing steady at um, 2,293 hits per day. I believe that's what HPD stands for. Um, Mm -hmm. Then with with Mint um, at number two, Fedora at number three, Debian at number four, and OpenSUSE at number five. Interestingly enough, though, um, Arch is at number six, and that's uh, rapidly increasing. This is sort of like the old top of the pops, top ten, if anybody is old enough to remember that. Um, but yeah, I found that quite interesting that Arch was coming up to six because I've heard, I'm starting to hear a lot of people talking about that now. And, um, it's just suddenly out of apparently nowhere when you had people talking about the traditional, for want of a better word, Linux distros, your Ubuntu, your Fedora, your Mint, your wherever. And now <laughs> Arch <laughs> seems to, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arch seems to suddenly have be on everybody's lips or a lot of people's lips and uh, I think it was mentioned in the Linux Outlaws as well um, just in the last episode so there's a lot of people supporting it and it's nice to see a new distro being given a crack of the whip and sent up the up the popularity stats and uh, you never know this time next year the whole Linux distribution uh, landscape could be very very different from what it is today um, I'm not sure the more distribution is very uh, very clear anymore so we talked about the web OS to start the show with uh, WebOS is not exactly distribution. Uh, in fact, it doesn't contain much except for the core Linux thing. And so, yeah, it's, it's not exactly distribution. You, you could argue that the Android is just a uh, delivery mechanism for apps, and it's based on Linux at the core, and has some DRM and all uh, that kind of stuff. I think the Linux uh, environment, uh, especially for a new person um, coming over to our fair shores, is probably confusing enough with uh, a plethora of distros, a plethora of desktop environments, um, file systems, file managers. Um, so I tend to generalize with the word distribution. I mean, I, I was talking more mainly for the desktop. Um, and I still believe, and I will argue to the bitter end, that there's still, certainly in the home as well, a need for a desktop machine. I, I don't buy into this tablet business. I really don't. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are, uh, reap the benefits of the of the ta- tablet computing and say how great they are. I just cannot get away from the traditional keyboard mouse. Um, I think it's very similar to the cloud uh, hype now. And can, I, can I just add as 
Sorry, can I just add one more thing as well that I'm sure. traditional about? I cannot stand infrared mice. I cannot stand them. They never work properly. Um, and that's on both Linux and Windows. I never get a, a smooth, a smooth tra- transmission between my hand and the screen, the pointer and the screen. Um, give me a mouse with a rollerball in it. Any-